This is the, the karipata tree, so curry leaves. It's a staple of so many Indian households. You ha kind of have to have this tree. You pull away these, these branches, and then you see there's all these little babies. You can't point at the new growth. You have to point like this. You can't, because this makes them feel bad about themselves. When I think about like the best memories in the backyard, it's hanging out with my parents, watching everyone get so excited, pointing with your index knuckle. <laughs> so you point like this, oh, oh, Kusuma, there's, there's some growth here. You're saying, oh, it's coming out here, it's coming out here. You can just rub your hands in it, smell it, and get that karipata oil that just sticks in your fingers. and just toss it into the oil and fry it. And they're so flavorful. I didn't really have much of a community before I started cooking. I'm super introverted, and so it gave me, I guess, something to connect to other people through. I would say that it's just the, it's the language that I speak. So my name is Kusama and I go by Kumi. Um, I'm a cook, I'm a, ugh. Yeah, okay, I can say I'm a chef. I do Indian inspired, Indian regional pop-up dinners that has a lot of rustic Italian meets Kashmiri Indian. There's a lot of Thai and South Indian crossovers. Okay, there is a bathroom if you kind of go down the hall to the left. My parents are both from India. They met in, in Bombay, and then they came to the States in the late 70s. I love it. <laughs> and some people said, why do you move to Arizona, not even a single Indian lives there? But when I came, I had to tell you how I got attached to Chusan community. Being the only person of color in my neighborhood growing up, it just built a foundation for a lot of really interesting things around identity and yeah. my feelings of self-worth. Mm -hmm. It's really strange to, to have people come into your house and say, your house smells funny, and then never return, and just be so othered with the kind of food that you have or trying to fit in and also trying to reconcile who you are and where you come from. Hey! Aramse is the name that I title my pop-ups, and the reason why I call my dinners that is it was the word used to describe a rainy day in Tucson, so a very rare occasion, where my family was then allowed to consume fried foods because my mom was very like health conscious and that was not good. Me and Kusuma used to put up cultural shows for schools. I would dress her up with her, all the dance costume, and I would make special Indian meal for the kids. My main idea was, as kids, if they know where we are from India, when they grow up, they recognize that, oh, she's from India. I know Mrs. Rao used to come with nice food for us. And you can embrace that culture with no inhibitions. I didn't fit in <laughs> with the, you know, the kids in the school that I went to, but I also didn't really fit into the Indian community. I felt like I was a little bit of an, like an outlier in a lot of different worlds. Mm -hmm. But my mom was definitely the cook. She would just spend hours and hours and hours in the kitchen trying to create something that she felt like was going to make someone feel maybe connected to their home. It was a spe special flavor. She would just be so nervous about, you know, wanting to create just like the perfect symphony of all these spices. And even though I didn't really understand, I think at the time, the dishes that she was making, I could really see just how much thought she put into it and how, how much meaning it, it held for her. And I feel like I learned that. 
And when she was at work, I would just go into the pantry and pull out all of the spices and try to figure out how they worked. She was 13 year old or 14 year old. And I'm not there, so she could try all the spices and make her own experiment and make her creative cooking. And I remember that there was a crossover between a lot of Indian spices and a lot of Mexican spices, and I really loved Mexican food. So I tried to just recreate Mexican dishes using the spices that were in my mom's spice pantry. She would leave a note on the countertop. Dad and mom, you don't have to cook dinner today. I made a special Chinese noodles with eggplants. Oh, I, I was so surprised the way she picked up. Later on to like my early mid 20s, I had been working a job that I was really bad at and I really felt like I needed to cook to de-stress. And so I was just throwing really elaborate dinner parties for my friends. And then I guess like a lot of people had interventions with me. Like you really need to do this. You need to stop doing what you're doing because you're wasting your time and you just need to cook. And um, she said, Mommy, I'm going to resign. What are you going to do, Kusama? I'm going to do something else, Mommy. I'm going to be a chef. Feeding people is a wonderful experience. Like it's, it's soul quenching. You get to be a voyeur into someone's palate and experience what they're experiencing. It's really intimate. Sometimes she's emotional if it doesn't come out right. She keeps adding some more ingredients to make it into perfection. And she goes through ups and downs. Mommy, this did not come. What else I can add to this? And I see her questioning herself what she can do better. And then when the final product comes out, I see her joy and happiness. It's so good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm already so happy that I so much of cooking this food and creating these dinners feels like going back to my childhood self and being able to show people who I am and where my family comes from. <laughs> the food that I do is not traditional Indian. It's the way that I learned how to cook. And because of that, it's the way that I got comfortable with being Indian. Blend of cultures, that's what I believe in. You know, we are all as one family. That's what I believe in. And I love it. We are all children of God. We're going to break bread. Um, and I feel like when I get to do these dinners, I can see people seeing me, which is always really nice to really be seen. Um, so thanks so much for being here. You're very, very special to me. Up?